Okay, we've all been there, playing our favorite tabletop RPGs and skirmish games using some of the worst terrain we got around. You know, your fattest book and half-drunk thing of Dr. Pepper. Ugh. But what if there was like an easy way around that? A nice, cheap, and simple solution that you can get snacks out of. All right, we're gonna keep it real easy. This build is just Cheez-Its and foam. So, you're gonna need to buy one family size box of Cheez-Its, dollar store foam board, dollar store takeout containers or plates, and XPS foam, probably from your local Home Depot or hardware store. So with any tabletop terrain, playability is gonna be the biggest, most important feature involved with it. I'm also putting a priority on modularity. I wanna be able to set up my table in any way I want, which means we're gonna have standardized walls. So to accommodate, we're gonna be breaking down every wall into two and a quarter inches long by three and a quarter inches tall. So the first step we're gonna to wanna to do is cut down our cheese it boxes and foam board into three and a half inch tall strips. I usually cut them down to about 10 inches because that's what's most workable for me and the cheese it box cut in half is in that ballpark. Now, here comes the real advantage of why we use the dollar store foam board. It's because the paper tears off of it super easy. Or not. Okay. Well, now you just make me look stupid. There we go. In the event that something like this happens, usually I'll just take some like water, throw it on a paper towel, wipe down the foam. Give it a little bit to set up and really absorb into the paper and after that it should peel right off. You can actually use this on some of the more expensive foam board brains to remove the paper that doesn't come off quite as easily. To apply our texture to this foam, we're just gonna be using tin foil and the Green Stuff World texture roller. Now, in the event that you don't just have a texture roller sitting around, or maybe the Green Stuff World ones just aren't your style, you can do this any number of ways. Like, you can just score out the brick pattern you want to include in the walls and glue those on. Works just as well. Now, while the texture roller is definitely a little faster than making your own bricks, it is by no means easier. <sighs> <sighs> now we're just gonna glue both ends together. let them sit overnight. Okay, now we're gonna start cutting off into those individual wall pieces. You're gonna start to see why I was playing a little fast and loose with some of the measurements before. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna square one of the short ends off. Now that we have one end we know is square, we're gonna use that to measure out the three and a quarter inch height we want on the wall. We didn't start with that three and a quarter inch because I know there's going to be a little bit of variance in the way that the foam comes together with the box and I just wanted to end up making one straight edge for it. Now we just measure out our two and a quarter inch wall segments and cut them out. Well, 
Now we have a bunch of wall segments, and that's all well and good, but let's have a bit of variation. Some of the things I like to do is add in some broken wall pieces. Now I don't know about you, but I'm not big on thinking a lot. So to help myself out, I ended up creating these templates for the broken ends on the different walls. They're gonna be in, in the description for free. Just go take them. Now, I went ahead and did the same thing for the doors and windows. Also, like, feel free to make up your own patterns for these wall ends. Like, share them around with your friends. Tag me on Instagram. One of my favorite effects to do is take these broken edges, chamfer them off, and then glue on a little bit of my own custom sand mixture in there. It's mostly just construction sand, grout, and a little bit of small aggregate. But I think the finished result looks fantastic. And with that, each of our individual walls are all done. Now, the first thing I do with the pillars is use another sheet of XPS foam as a measurement. So, using the own piece as a reference, I can come up with perfectly square pieces. And I just cut these out with a utility knife. After that, I like to chamfer the edges on here, make them a little irregular and more natural looking. Again, simple ball of tin foil, texture them up, and they're perfectly fine at this rate. You don't have to do anything else. But, in the event that you want to, as I'm sure you've seen hundreds of times before on better crafting channels, you take a hard wire brush across the foam, it's going to make a really nice and convincing wood texture. Personally, I prefer taking a file and scoring in my own stone into there. And I, uh, I kind of lost the footage to that one. Sorry. But they look nice. Now, with our walls and pillars complete, we're almost totally done with it. Let's start assembling. Now, before we want to assemble, I'm going to tell you the way I put terrain together. And that is, again, by not thinking. I use the Tetris terrain method. Basically, we all know the different shapes and such that are in Tetris, so why not just steal them? Kind of helps us make standardized, more unique parts to our terrain table. Now, for the purposes here, we're not going to be using the line piece or block. 
I'm also going to add little corner pieces because, well, they're on every table. All right, now that we're all terrain assembled, let's start finishing them off. We're going to take some of that leftover dollar store foam board and we're going to cut it into three quarter inch strips and one inch squares. Texture them up and start gluing them down. I place down the one inch squares wherever a pillar is. Try and get it as centered as you can, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. And then you can measure out and cut the strips in to glue them in and make them look real nice. But there's going to be a little bit of variance anywhere, so usually I'll cut them to approximate and then trim them down as they need to be. Similar to the pillars, I'm going to take one of my metal files and start adding a brick texture to the top tiles. We're going to add some screws to the bottom of the pillars, you know, give them a little bit of weight, prevent them from falling over. And with all that, construction's complete. We've built all of the terrain. Now we just gotta start painting. All right, then after that, take some colors of your choice, a dry brush of your choice, Let's get cracking. Yeah, that's it. It's that easy. A couple hours every night and you're going to have a table full of awesome terrain for games like Frostgrave or Age of Sigmar. I think in the future I want to try just texturing with the tinfoil and make a little bit more of a sci-fi aesthetic for Star Wars Legion in the same system. Have a crack at it yourself. Share it around with your friends. And you know what? In the comments below, what kind of cheese it's you like? Extra toasty myself. <laughs>